Welcome back and thank you very much. We have told you earlier that we'll bring you an extensive coverage of the State of the Nation Address to be addressed by His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, in Parliament today. Uh, Trust Media General, your election command centre, to deal with all the issues one after the other. We'll talk about the state of security in this country and we'll invite you to send your thoughts and comments as well. 020 2166633. My guest this morning is Dr. Ishmael Norman. He's the president of the Institute for Security, Disaster and Emergency Research. Also joining me is Mr. Adams Bona. He's a security and safety expert, counterterrorism, defense and uh, international relations. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing, Doc? Good to see you. Yes, yeah, sir. You look dashing. <laughs> Just for you. Yesterday, I, I, we started a conversation with Mr. Bona on the state of uh, security in the country. I would want to start off with you uh, because we've not had a chance to hear what your own assessment of the security situation is. Mr. Bona had his bite yesterday. But you tell me, how would you assess the security situation in the country at the moment? I think generally speaking, Ghana is not doing too badly. Mm. Um, I would say we are between five and six okay. in terms of our security right. situation. Um, but there are a lot of issues that we need to address. Um, infrastructure protection okay. Okay. is a big issue. Um, I expect the, uh, the leadership of the nation to talk about this because when you look at our dams, when you look at um, our water bodies, when you look at um, even electricity generation, mm -hmm. the, the pylons and the rest, uh, transformers and all of that. When you, you, you look at that infrastructure, okay. just at the energy sector, mm. there is not so much happening in terms of protection. Okay. Our bridges and roads are not in good shape. Mm. Um, so that's a very big aspect of infrastructure. Right. So if you cannot take care of the infrastructure properly, mm. then you are exposing your entire system okay. to threats. Right. Another thing is that you see a lot of um, there are a lot of people um, cooperating with our military organizations, right. foreigners. Mm. There's a lot of espionage going on. Really? And I, I think so, because what are they doing? We're part Every, of the global village. Yeah, we are. We are part of the global village, but we got very important mineral resources mm. that needs to be protected. Right. We have bauxite, we have gold, you know them, mm. you, you, list, you know the list. And we may not be aware of how important and strategic these okay. are, but they want to know our stock, okay. the exhaustion point, how much money we're going to make, and, and not everybody that we partner with mm. is a good intentioned partner. Mm. Some of them are here to see our weaknesses so that they can use it against us. Right. Another issue is mm. the supply chain food. Okay. Mm. We are too dependent on importation of food. Okay. So if somebody really wants to hurt us mm. through the food, they don't even have to send munitions and, and arms. Mm. Just sabotage the food supply system right. and that will really, really mm. hurt us. Our water bodies, we are in a very, very serious dire situation when it comes to our water bodies. West Africa has already been predicted that about two, three years ago, that in 50 years from that time, mm. West Africa will have serious problems with water. water. We're already mm. experiencing water shortages mm. in many metropolitan situations. Um, so I think what is happening with the Galamse mm. and the pollution of our water bodies, I think the governments of this country, not just this one, mm. have not been too responsible. The government says there's a fight. Between who and who? Between those who are destroying our environment and those of them who want to stop it, Galam Stop, Operation Vanguard, they are all there. I think every government exists because of its ability to protect the people, mm. provide them uh, public health, good public health. If you cannot protect the water bodies mm. and you are passing the blame on somebody else, I have an issue with that. So, so. I don't care, you are the government, you got the munitions, you got the soldiers, you got the police, you got everything. You have the duty to protect the water source of this country so that at some point in time, in our lifetime, we will not be importing water mm. to drink and to wash our clothing. The president put his job on the line 
in regards to that, is that not enough commitment to you? When I look at the Pra River, when I look at other river bodies in this country, mm -hmm. and, and the color of the river alone mm -hmm. tells me that putting your job on the line is one thing. Making sure that the reality happens on the ground mm -hmm. is another thing. And the two cannot be inconsistent. Okay. Mr. Bonal, let's, let's start this conversation. Let's let pick your thoughts, unless you, for example, have a few, uh, one or two lines to say regarding what Mr. Uh, Dr. Norman spoke about. I spoke about infrastructure, collaboration, food security, and all of that. I could give you two minutes, and then we'll talk about vigilantism. Yes, uh, he, he rated the government between five and six. Right. I rated them... 47. 47, which is between four, four and five. Four or five, right. I mean, beginning of the year, I rated them between... Uh, Five and six. Okay. And you know, uh, fast forward, I think I should have even rated them lower mm. because we now have two interior ministers. Right. Okay, we have two interior ministers mm. and we don't seem to have clarity. And so, any nation that, ha that has this type of structure, mm. and you know, the work of the interior minister is well defined. Mm. The work of the interior minister includes signing explosives. Right. You know, licensing to bring explosives. Firearms. Uh, firearms. You know, licensing, not, you know, apart from issuing a firearm licenses to individuals, mm -hmm. they also, he's in charge of signing firearms licenses for, you know, bulk importation. Right. And so that actually changes, you know, uh, the game. Mm -hmm. What it means is that, and we are talking about Galamse. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, I mean, Galamse is mining, you know, uh, illegally. Right. What it means is that these guys, I mean, when you say explosive, that includes dynamite right. and all the other ones. Mm. And so if Interior Minister A refuses to sign the license to import, mm. Interior Minister B could sign, right? Is it, is it as easy as it sounds? Somebody would make the argument that a Minister <coughs> of State at the Presidency would have a carved out role within the bigger picture of the interior ministry. Is that not what culminated into Ayawa Suez were gone, where the Minister of National Security wasn't sure mm. who Brian Achampong was to him? I mean, I'm not saying it. Right, he, right. he says Minister of State. Mm. He says- Mr. Kandapa. Mr. Kandapa said he didn't, he wasn't, uh, Brian Achampong mm. is his, could be his deputy, mm. but the commission said, no, he can't be your deputy. The what's the name? The presidency through its own white paper mm. did say Brian Champon is not his deputy. Okay. Okay. Mm. And therefore, there's no clarity. And so mine is that even though I rated this government between five and six mm. beginning of this year, mm. I mean it keeps going down. Especially when you what, look. What at clarity do you want to see? The clarity I the want structure to see should be the minister. The Minister of State and the Deputy, is that not all the structure? Yes. So no. what clarity do you want to No, see? you have a minister and a deputy, but at the moment, technically, we don't have a deputy minister at the Interior Ministry. Absolutely. We don't have it. Right. And so it means that there is a vacuum. And so today, if the Interior Minister is not there, let's mm. say he travels outside the country mm. and something has to be signed, the Minister of State at the Interior Ministry mm could sign that on behalf, I mean, could sign that on behalf of the state. Right. And technically, it is legit. If you look at the instrument that establishes the interior, I mean, mm. it's, it is categorical that some certain things would have to be signed by the minister, the minister yeah. or else it has to go to the National Security Council. Mm. When there is no interior minister, it has to go to the National Security Council. Where the Council, president is boss. Where the president <laughs> is boss to say, go ahead and sign it. But in this case, we, there's no clarity. So, so your difficulty is that Mr. Brian Champon, who is now uh, Interior Minister of State at the Presidency, would have his own stamp. I, 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 not and, at the Presidency, at the, at the... At the Ministry. Yes. And then Mr. Ambrose Derry, lawyer Ambrose Derry, will also have his stamp. Yeah. And you say that's confusion. That's confusion. For me, we, there has to be clarity. Okay. Especially when you know, I mean, anyone who works with the security services, you know, a lot of division. I mean, I think... Uh, this morning I'm told that there's some confusion even at the, the immigration right. where, you know, some people are doing that pulling, mm. pulling down syndrome, mm. wanting the controller to be, you know, take sanctioned it, because it. of some clinic they are setting up. Mm. And so there's a lot of division. So you don't want a situation where uh, an agency head gets up instead mm. of going to the interior minister. Mm. 
maybe Ambrose Derry or I mean it needs to be clear or go into so we need to know who are they who going are they to reporting who to? are they reporting okay. to and so for me these are mm -hmm. worrying and apart from that the issues of Galamse we seem to be talking about Galamse on land mm -hmm. alone but I would want to also hear the president talk about the Galamse on a high seas okay. petroling mm. okay petroling we have Chinese with big vessels they put them together. Mm. I mean, is this is just by the by by the sea? I right. mean, it's just by the sea. They put two what do you call it big uh, vessels together and put what do you call that a, a net in between mm. them mm. and they scoop everything. They scoop everything out. And our local fishermen are literally just catching empty bottles and all that. And so apart from the fact that we are getting to a point where our environment on land is all you know getting depleted, destroyed. Mm. On the sea, our fish stock is also well, getting well, depleted the graphic, by the day. The, the graphic is reporting this morning that we're losing about $50.7 million yearly, and the artificial designer miners are crying. What you're talking about? Well, Illegal yes. Illegal fishing, they're, exactly. they're crying. They, we're losing $50.7 million and, and every we, year. And we sit here and we say we don't have money. Hmm. No, no, we sit here and we don't have money. No, no let me come and, to and you. And that is, that is the, the strangest thing about us. Mr. Bona raises a very critical point on the, uh, if you like, separation of powers. <coughs> the Brian Achampon's role at the Ministry of Interior and Mr. Ambrose Derry's role at the Ministry of Interior, the rules are clear what they can sign. And we do know that the Interior Minister has control over the police, fire service, immigration, Prison. prisons, BNI, all of those ones. Mm. So the power they wield is quite heavy. How can we have two people with the same powers at the same place. Do you see the confusion is talking about? On the surface of it, mm -hmm. there appears to be uh, a bit of confusion. Okay. But I'm of old school security thought. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the people of Ghana mm -hmm. don't have a right to understand the architecture mm -hmm. of the security layout mm -hmm. in this country. Okay. They don't have the right. They don't? No. D notices. They have a right to be protected, okay. but they don't have a right to know the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of how the security architecture of the country is laid out. Because okay. if they, everybody gets to know it, mm -hmm. then we don't have an architecture yeah. right. of security. Right. All right. Mr. Brian Champon did not appoint himself. Mm. So his duties, his appointment must come with specific okay. line of duties. Mm -hmm. And so, so long as the two men can coordinate mm -hmm. their activities, because the structure of the interior ministry right. is itself is defective. How so? There are too many agencies reporting, authorities reporting to the interior ministry. Right. Too many. I think at some point, mm -hmm. it will be good to have Homeland Security Interior Ministry yeah. and national security as we have it but more give it a different name so that some of the activities some of the authorities under the interior ministry could be passed to that ministry are we at that point yet maybe this is the beginning of it okay. the confusion is good mm -hmm. the discussion about the confusion is good right. and i i support the submission of mr bona that there is actually a, a real problem. But it's an election year, Dr. Norman. <laughs> and then that's the, that's the concern that will come where, for example, we do know that the military plays a minimal role in terms of policing our elections. You go to a polling station, it's either a policeman, a fire service, a prisons man, immigration. They are the ones that are usually there. Yeah. Now, they are at the beck and call of the interior minister. And the concerns being raised, for example, from Ayahuasca West Wogon, where Mr. Brandon Champon was fingered, and he's come out to say that the report didn't mention him. It raises questions. The other political parties may start raising questions. And, and I'm not Don't cutting you. you. Uh, per their own structure and conventions, usually the deputy minister of the interior okay. superintend directly over election security. Right. He is in charge of the tax force. But as he speaks, and, you don't have a and, and he would have to report mm. to the interior minister right. daily or depending on, you know, the frequency right. of it. But as we speak, you don't have a deputy. we don't have a deputy, okay. you know, interior minister. So mm. for me, 
it's a lot of things. I mean, yeah. No, so that, that he's brought some more flesh on onto the bone now. Please <laughs> chew, chew a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so please chew a bit. I, I'm, I'm saying that the con the con the con confusion, or if you like, the challenge yeah. that we have, would be raised by the political parties, other political parties, that look, we are going into an election already. There are noises about a new voters register, and people are looking into it. Now there's a conversation about who does what at the Interior Ministry and who cracks which whip to draw who into line. The people who police the elections are under your purview, but there are two heads at the same institution. Can we trust them to be free, fair, and firm? I think in a dynamic system like a country, mistakes are good learning points. Mm. So I always saw West Wagon was a big mistake okay. by the security apparatus. Mm. I think, I want to be optimistic here, right. that they have learned from that mistake. Mm. And going forward, I think they will streamline okay. the lines of responsibility, who orders who, who deploys which force, and so on and so forth. That mistake will not be repeated, because if they repeat that, mm. it will not be forgivable. So I think Mr. Brian Achampon okay. made a mistake by saying that a legally constituted commission's mm. report was bogus. bogus. Mm. But he was under stress. The man has been under stress, under attack, for a very, very long time, mm. since Iowa. So he West says he was not mentioned anywhere in the He report. wasn't mentioned. So how come he, his, he was singled out for reprimand? Right. His ministry, his unit was mentioned by he personally. But you know, when you are the head of an organization, the all the book stops with you. Right. I think he misspoke on and, and characterizing the commission's report as bogus. I think thinking hindsight, Mr. Brian Champong will reframe the statement and will not make the same statement. I'm not speaking for him. I'm not holding brief for him. But I think when you have a very young, active, aggressive man in charge of security mm -hmm. who may not have had deep immersion in military training, mm -hmm. there could be issues with bravado and with testosterone explosion. His ex-military. Yes, but I don't know what his SOP was. Right. So. There are many military people who yeah. do not know anything mm. about crowd right. control, right. Intelligence. Uh, mm. intelligence, intelligence, and intelligence. all of that. So I don't know what his SOP was, and I don't want to interrogate Brian okay. Achampong. Okay. The issue about election violence, it's inversely related to the activities of the two parties, right. dominant parties. Mm. The language they use often is a language of call to arms. Mm. They don't censor themselves too often. Um, everybody got very angry when, at one point, before the current president became president, right. he said, all die, be die, yeah. during the campaign activity. Right. That statement was a little bit, you know, irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And I think he, he knew that. The moment he came out of his mouth, he knew it was wrong. However, in the a, in a thick of election, a lot of statements are made. We need our political parties and leadership to censor themselves a little bit. Okay. Because Ghana is bigger than President Nana Akufuado. Ghana is bigger than NDC or MPP. These parties will go and come and Ghana will still be there. That's right. So they have to limit their ego. They have to limit their quest for power. There's too much invested in political power amongst the two parties. And I don't know whether because of the Lajis access to money. Would you blame it on the winner takes all I, syndrome where you get in, you have access to everything, including public toilets, toll boots, <laughs> and everything? I think so. Our, our constitutional yeah, framework uh, is part of the problem. Yes, that, that's what I mean. It allows it, the constitution. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think, but we can do better. We can do better as adults running the government. But it appears of late. Every time we're talking about malfeasance, 
It's coming from the adults, members hmm. of this population. Look, 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 let me bring in a conversation about the I asked West work on. Yeah. The ML Short Commission uh, of uh, three very respectable persons put together a report. The government rejected some of the recommendations most of, of the report, in fact, most of them, by its white paper. Would, would you not think that that could perhaps be emboldening the people who went out there to foment trouble to do even worse, in spite of the fact that we have a law now and the parties are being put into a room to sign a pact to say never again? It's good to sign a pact to say never again, but I think at some point our president may have to sit down with all the part political parties mm -hmm. and really face to face, man to man, mm -hmm. reassure them, not through the television cameras, but man to man. Because I think it was a mistake mm -hmm. for the current government to be dismissive of the commission it put together. I think that I can understand the emotional energy behind that, mm -hmm. that these people were fighting for the party, and so we are the government, we have mm -hmm. to protect them so that we can have the soldiers to continue to believe in us. As a parent, we can all relate to that kind of talk. Right. But when you are in leadership position, you are not just a parent to your children. Mm -hmm. You are under a constitutional mandate. Okay. I don't see the president as my father. He is the leader of this country, okay. and he's under a constitutional mandate mm -hmm. to protect every single one of us. So when you reject a commission, that you put together to investigate situation which was not palatable to the members of this country, mm -hmm. then it means that you don't really care about what happens to the majority of the people in the country, except if they are bona fide members of your political party. That message is what I think we are trying to amend. Everybody is working towards that, the Christian Council, mm -hmm. the election monitors, everybody is talking towards that, that we should amend our mentality towards the winner take all, towards violence, mm -hmm. and, and, and talk a language of inclusivity. Is it your opinion, Doc, and this is my final one to before I come to uh, Mr. Bonner, your opinion that the president could be in a fix because he commands the national security. What happened at Ayala's West Wogon was under the auspices of the national security. And so accepting the recommendations of the commission could perhaps be painting himself with a black brush. Is it your opinion too? I, I agree with you and I don't agree. Tell me. Sometimes when you are a leader, even in the military, when you are in the military, mm -hmm. you're on a mission, you are given an order. The way you execute it, mm -hmm may be different from the expectations of the leadership. Right. So the president cannot be held responsible for the execution. I think things went wrong with the execution, mm -hmm. the modalities for execution, maintaining peace and order at the, at the voting um, uh, station. Right. So that cannot be ascribed to uh, or attributable mm -hmm. to the president. Mm -hmm. However, as the overall boss, I think our, our leaders are too arrogant. One can say, people of Ghana, we admit that we made a mistake mm -hmm. on this one. We ask for your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That you will not die, you will not lose part of your image, you even become bigger when you can say, we made a mistake. And I assure you, it won't happen again. And you say it's ego that's stopping it's us from ego. doing that. It's ego. It's nothing more than that. Okay. Zabona, no scapegoats yet, but we have a law, we have a report. The report was emphatic who should be uh, put where, who should be punished. We have a law. The Peace Council is trying to get the parties to agree. The NDC says, look, there are 22 um, pointers. Only four relates to the political parties. The other 18 stakeholders are not signing on. So we will not sign until they come on board. Is there a stalemate from where you sit? Well, yes, I, I would want to begin by saying when this whole uh, vigilantism and other offenses uh, thing started by, you know, I think the president 
mentioned it in another State of the Nations address yes. when I think he, he mentioned it, uh, you know, and gave the political parties time to, mm. you know, come together and put something together right. or else it's going to pass Absolutely. a law. Right. And, uh, you know, fast forward, I mean, I was invited to probably uh, put in a submission okay. to add to the law, but I refused. Why did you refuse? I refused because I told them uh, point blank that the law wasn't going to work. It Why was, not? It was an unnecessary law. And today, as we speak, mm. just within, uh, just people, uh, people who want to represent, uh, you know, the MPP, mm. picking forms mm. and submitting same. Have you not seen the, the chaos? People getting butchered, mm. people getting beaten. Is that not vigilantism? Have you heard anywhere, mm. in any constituency, that any of these people have been arrested by the police? Are we saying all these areas where these things are taking place, mm. we don't have police officers there? We have them. Yeah. But the simple reason is that we seem to have a law that is an unnecessary law, mm. a law that will not work, mm. if you ask me, because the police officer answers to the DC. He answers to the MC. Mm. He answers to the regional minister. Who are all civilians. Who are all civilians. Not formed. Good. And so when chaos, uh, I mean, when they uh, indulge themselves in chaos and butchering themselves, usually what you hear is it is an internal issue. Mm. Let us deal with it. A crime is a crime. I saw some of these images yesterday mm. and I was surprised. But you see, there again, I wasn't surprised because then, if you look at the commission's sittings mm. and the recommendations the commission's made, one of it significant enough had to do with mm. the Independent uh, Police Complaint Commission, mm. of which the presidency rejected flatly. Okay? Mm. And as we speak, if I get probably beaten by a police officer, mm -hmm. I must still go to the police to report. Right. And you and I know that if you, I went to the police to report, I might never get proper redress to whatever, you know, uh, you know it. Dogs and don't so, bite dogs. And, and yes, exactly. And so mm -hmm. mine is that the commission's recommendations, if the presidency mm -hmm. have accepted it in its entirety and said this is probably the, the point where we change the whole mm -hmm. architecture mm -hmm. of the of, of our security, right. probably mm. we would have made a lot of inroads. But as it is, mm. it's become more chaotic. Okay. Even though uh, one will say some of the recommendations were uh, accepted, mm. I will still say that we seem to have too many laws. I mean, he's a lawyer. Mm. Too many laws in our law books mm. that we know can never work. And okay. from the day this law was passed up to today, mm -hmm. It's never worked. And you have a situation where the Peace Council, I haven't had the Peace Council, my good friend, Reverend Professor, uh, Professor Asante. Asante, I mean, being on different programs with him, nice gentleman. I mean, I don't envy him because if you see what is going on, just submit, submitting forms and taking forms, mm. then you say, where is the Peace Council? Why is the Peace Council not speaking against the chaos? So if the peace Nobody's council, holding them from speaking. No, exactly. So, my so point, why aren't they speaking? Why aren't they speaking? And so mine is, is it just going to sign a pact that would change, what do you call it, the way we do things? Mm -hmm. Because then within, you know, party, within the party itself, you have a lot of chaos. And mm -hmm. so if probably going to the December polls, you have maybe party on party, mm -hmm. you know, amongst mm -hmm. maybe NDC, MPP, NDC, CPP. Right. Would we be able to separate them? Because amongst the, you know, internally, internally we yeah, haven't been able to separate them. And so mine is that, uh, Johnny, this whole pact that they've been asked to sign, if you ask me, I would say that, uh, is it necessary? I don't know. What do we need? Uh, what we actually need should have been going back to the drawing board, taking the Ayawa's West Wagon uh, recommendations, the, mm. you know, commission's recommendations, and saying that let's implement this whole thing to the letter that way because it recommended some structural changes right. to the way things are done as we mm -hmm. speak the national security is an illegality right. because the national security seems to have a standby force armed to the teeth mm -hmm. you saw them during the day with brand new rifles mm -hmm. right brand new do they have an armory who do they account to but we know per the national security the instrument that establishes the national security mm. their work is mainly monitoring evaluation coordinating mm. and all that and so if they feel they didn't they, they felt they didn't have any speciality with regards to 
uh, being able to uh, dealing with centaurs and mm. they need maybe a special team from the military, mm. they bring them in. Okay. Or the police, they bring them but in. But they are not supposed to have their own formed unit, that's what you're they saying. They are not supposed to have them. But at the moment, as we speak, even if they have them, even if, if they are supposed to have them, it's not it, it's who is supposed to be commandeering those people mm. at national security. It should be somebody who probably, uh, it is easy to say they are under this unit. But as we speak, we don't know. <laughs> and you and I know, as we speak, that some media men have been bundled and sent to national security mm, or BNI mm, mm. and they, you know, uh, counsel to these people sometimes who go and they will sit from morning to evening. Probably we all would have to be waiting for the day, God mm. forbid, mm. where uh, they decide that, you know what, you don't have to sleep on your bed, you have to go there. So mine is that the national security as it exists today, I have said it openly that it has outlived its usefulness. Let's look at how this, the national, it's a very important institution right. if we put in what is expected. Mm. But the current structure for me, mm. I mean, it's too murky where you have party foot soldiers right. who are brought in mm. and uh, so you have the, the urge to join uh, vigilantism groups or, mm. you know, these groups, you know, what's his name? Is it Bamba or something? Yes, yes. He said he works with national security right. today. Mm -hmm. If you have to work, if you want to say you're not, you need maybe, uh, you know, a jacket like this yeah. and something, you know, a gota, right. you know, mm -hmm. a radio. Mm -hmm. And then you go to a chop bar and they say out. national security mm -hmm. boys are coming and they put them there. It's only in Ghana where a national security people would usually tell uh, you, announce themselves. announce themselves that I'm a national security. Okay. In other places, no. You can live next door to an undercover agent. For ye, you will never get to know. But over here, he says, oh, um, you don't know me. I mean, then he takes the side card and show it, shows it to you. And so that is the challenge we have. Okay, well, challenge. Doc, let, let me come to you. The question of vigilantism, the argument has been that the moment we started the Galamse fight, most of these guys in there would either go and cut trees or would become... Uh, tied to the apron strings of these politicians and will be fomenting trouble. The recruitment process for these guys are known. The devil finds work for the idle hands. The, the level of unemployment keeps rising, even though government says it is coming down. But the reality is there on the ground. People go out there for 20 cities, a t-shirt, 50 cities, a t-shirt, they are passed, and they do manner of things both on MPP and NDC side. But can this ever stop? In order to stop vigilantism and youth mm. um, violence, right. the adult members of the population mm. that are in control of the power structure right. have to do a lot more and mm. stop talking and do a lot more. Mm. They have to provide opportunities for the young men and women. Mm. Um, and there are women that are members of these vigilante right. groups. Um, they have to provide jobs for them because truly, truly, I sometimes wonder why we tend to forget the etiology of problems okay. and we go only to the result of mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. or the outcomes of the problem. These are self-created problems yeah. by the successive governments by neglecting to ensure that our institutions, our businesses, for crying out aloud, this is a conservative party in government, not a social democratic party. Mm -hmm. And yet, Private enterprise is the engine of growth. I don't see too much of that happening. Most of the programs are being sponsored by government yeah. rather than private enterprise. Mm -hmm. Private enterprise is not being ennobled mm -hmm. to create the job opportunities for the youth. So when you make a law, the law is an ass. The law will have no bite. Mm -hmm. This coming election is going to be a very dicey situation. Why? No, because Please. there are too many young men and women unemployed, yeah. looking for jobs, and because of the winner-take-all mentality, they will align with the party that they think is going to win, right. and they will do anything possible to be noticed by the party. That is where the excesses, the youthful exuberance comes, comes from. Mm -hmm. They want to act within their party cohort to be noticed by the leadership so mm -hmm. that when the party comes into power, mm -hmm. they will be favorably considered. Our problem is that our leaders talk too much and do very, very little. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, let's uh, read your thoughts and comments now, shall we? 020-216-6633. Do you also believe that our leaders talk too much and do very little? Uh, we'll go to the text console. Now, when we come back, I'm sure we can talk about some more security issues. My guest this morning, Dr. Ishmael Norman and also Mr. Adams. But now, we'll go to the screens now and check out what's happening on our screens. Okay. And uh, keep sending your messages in. Lots of them have come in so far. And we're happy to read uh, them. He says, good morning. I think by the comments, um, I think no comment made by ex-president Mahama calls for chaos. So the president should rather be worried of losing power and come December because of defeat uh, glaring at them. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's, let's come. I think those are messages from yesterday. Good morning, TV3. We are begging the president in the name of our forefathers that we don't want to hear about the free SHS being distinctive at today's sonar because we are tired of hearing that over and over again as if that was the only promise given to us in 2016. Elikem from Ho Abbas. Amogobo. Offensive says, with all this uh, gloomy picture, Nanadu and his vice president want us to believe that all is well with Ghana's economy. What at all has the MPP done in their three years in office? I'm expecting the president to apologize for lying his way to power. Uh, this is shameful. The government is surviving on propaganda. 2020 is a rescue year. Johnny, good morning. Personally, I don't think this government has done so well with security issues in this country. Security is just not, uh, it's just, it's not just about men holding guns. Bad roads and availability of drugs, poor water sources are killing citizens daily. Ghanaians must uh, rethink when the opportunity presents itself. Crosby in Hohoi. Good morning, Johnny. Please, I'd love the president to talk about the faith and future of our NAPCO trainees. The three years will be over next year. So what are the plans in place to ensure secure jobs after these three years of uh, the NAPCO? And I think that's what Dr. Norman was talking about. Uh, the Wahala and also shift payment, swift payment of tip stipends or increments in stipends. I'm a trainee, but it's very sad I've worked, but have not received my stipend from November till now. I still have to be at work every day. If this is happening in election year, we can't be sure what will happen next year. They always pay and leave some trainees out. Note, I have no problem with my details or anything. I'll be receiving until November, and I'm still waiting for payment. 2020 is here. We all go vote some, okay? Johnny, as usual, the president will come and speak good English, but full of propaganda. I expect him to talk about the fight against corruption and Galam say Charles Nyamina Samankas says, as usual, Mr. President is going to read what has been put on paper for him, but the real state of the nation is best taken or as said from the people, the markets, lorry stations, offices and the likes. And the commonness of responses you can get from these places is that this MPP government has failed woefully. Eben from Kwabinya, Welder Junction says, I expect the president today to address the issue of Galam Singh and how far he's been able to fight corruption in his government. Also, with the issues of missing aboboyas and excavators, greetings, uh, you say to some people. State of what address? They should give us a break. What have they done in the past years? Apu, Ismaila, Roya Ali. I think I like this man you are interviewing on political violence. He's addressing issues objectively. There are two gentlemen in the studio. Which one of them? The taller one or the shorter one? Good morning to you, Johnny, and your home, honorable panelists. I expect the president to present a cloudless explanation on how uh, and why he has lost the fight against Galam Singh, albeit a zealous pledge to put his presidency on the line in the matter. He's also expected to drop a few comments on the failure of the RTI law as put to test by a parliamentarian. A cacophony of self praise, a plethora of refined and repeated promises, and a myriad of inaccuracies certainly forms part of my expectation. Alasan Wanaiwa says, Good morning, Johnny, and your panelists. Obviously, Ghana is doing very well regarding the security under Nanako Fado. He's able to fight for our water bodies to be clean. He fights against illegal mining corruption, has reduced all these under the MPP. Let's Nanako Fado. Uh, let's give him four more years to do more. Okay. Uh, good morning. Did I hear Dr. Norman say, Ghanaians don't have the right to know the structures of our national security. Is it an internationally accepted concept or principle? He wants to know. We'll find out for you. Hello, good morning, Johnny. I'm happy you're talking about security this morning. In fact, there's this security arrangement put in place at Sola in Wa Stretch, which is very irritating, time wasting, useless, and bogus. The security men there have now taken it as Galamsey opportunity to extort monies from drivers and passengers. I'm pleading with you and Mr. Bonar to let this get to the Minister of Interior to ask as a matter of agency to dissolve that arrangement. Kofi B in Sola. Good morning, guys. Tell 
the president to do the right thing? Which of the things? Okay, as President Kufuado is going to deliver State of Nation address at par in Parliament today, uh, my expectation is that the president should tell Ghanaians exactly the steps he and his government have put in place to curtail all the Galamse uh, people that are destroying our river bodies and land. Special greetings, you say to Captain Morrow. Uh, okay, we, we don't know whether he has filed yet or not. But I'm sure there's a, a place where we safely will take a break. When we return, we'll have some more conversations on security. This is our extensive coverage of the State of the Nation address in fulfillment of Article 67 by the President of the Republic in Parliament today. Uh, it will be his very final uh, State of the Nation address. We'll be back after this break. Waiting the president to arrive in parliament to deliver his State of the Nation address, we're told it will happen at 10 a.m. Also, we're picking an indication that the president, who is the only uh, presidential candidate who's filed to contest uh, the uh, primaries for the NPP, on the ticket of the NPP, will submit his forms today. So we are eager and anxious about it. But my guest in studio to continue our conversation on security is Dr. Ishmael Norman, is the president, Institute for Security, Disaster and Emergency Research. Also, Mr. Adam Bonner, he is is a uh, security and safety expert, counter terrorism, defense, and international relations. And COP Bright Odro, retired former director general of the Criminal Investigations Department, is joining us. COP, welcome. Good morning. Happy New Year. Thank you. I haven't seen you this year. I'm around. Great. <laughs> Before the break, we we're talking about the state of security. We had spoken about Galamse, about vigilantism, and all the issues in between. Um, the Mr. Brian Champon holding perhaps equal powers like uh, Mr. Ambrose Derry and all of that. I don't know if you would want to take a quick bite at the salad of issues and then we can get into some others. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't seem to get it. Uh, I think he, Brian is Minister of State mm. in charge of the interior. Right. Uh, so I don't know how they're going to I mean, schedule their work. Uh, there is a minister, substantive minister of the interior, right. and then now there is a minister of state in charge interior. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't, I don't see to, 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 to get it. Uh, Brian was at the at the national security right. as minister of state in charge national security. Even though we also had the minister in charge national security, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a duplication. I, 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 I don't actually see, mm -hmm. see how they are going to operate, how the interior minister is going to operate and how he's also going to operate. Mm. I, I, I don't Has see it happened my, before? I don't think so. I don't think we've ever had a minister of national minister of interior mm. and a minister of state in charge. I haven't seen that before. I don't know if it has ever happened, but mm. for me I don't think I've ever heard or seen that in Ghana before. Okay, let's talk about the uh, Takradi girls, the kidnaps and the unsolved killings. There are so many, a companion of them. Thankfully, you have been in that seat before, before uh, Mami Thiwa took over from you and are the, the new gentleman handling the, the position. The police had announced and told everybody else that they had found DNA and, and concluded that indeed the bones were that of the four girls that were missing in Takradi. But the suspect is still in police custody and the case is not ended. The trial has not closed. Is it normal from where you sit with your experience as the boss of CID, is it normal to close the matter, have evidence and yet keep the suspect in, in police custody? I think the suspect has been jailed for the escape. Right, escape. right. right. Absconding yes, the, absconding and all of that. Full custody. I think right. he had, he had uh, three years or so. Exactly. But uh, with the discovery of the bones, mm -hmm. um, I said somewhere that uh, there should have there should have been this murder docket open. Okay. Uh, even the murder docket should have been open long before uh, maybe these bones were discovered because right. of course these bones belong to somebody okay. or they belong to some people who had been killed and then put into the, the, the manhole. Mm. And so that and the identities were not known at the time. Mm. And so initially we should have opened a murder docket mm. and then gone into it. But then immediately after the discovery of the bones, mm -hmm. I understand the police opened a murder, a murder docket. Okay. Uh, who killed the girls? Who dumped them there? How did they die? Uh, and what was the motive? All these questions need to be answered and the police need to delve into 
and then find answers mm -hmm. to these questions. I'm sure they are doing something. Uh, but the public also need to know what is happening because mm -hmm. this boy do to the world also uh, yeah, has, Williams. Yeah, has been jailed for escaping from lawful custody. Right. But was he responsible for the killings? That is yet to be answered. And it is the police, the CID, that has to investigate and then find answers. I don't know how far they've gone into with this murder, mm -hmm. the, the killing of the girls. DNA revealed these were the girls. But I had expected long ago that a physical identification mm -hmm. should have also been done. Okay. I, I read somewhere about some mad murders, mm -hmm. and then the, the, uh, the identification process was the, the rosaries that the, the, these uh, victims had on them right. and the dresses. Mm -hmm. So that is physical identification. The, in the case of the girls, mm -hmm. there was, I think we did not hear much about physical identification. Mm -hmm. The family should have been told to come maybe uh, 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 educated, told how to contain themselves and be able to identify. We had the, the teeth, we had the clothing, we had the waste beads and mm -hmm. others that were also discovered right. alongside there. Yes. But that, I don't know. We, we haven't heard much about the physical identification except the DNA that identified the girls. If the, the physical identification process had gone through, alongside what the DNA discovered, or the DNA report was, there would have been finality. The families would not even say they the, the would not accept the result of the DNA. So, some people in Takwadiya, for example, raised questions about the back and forth. The gentleman alleged to have kidnapped the, the girls. He escapes. He goes out there all the way to Nigeria. We send people. He's brought back. And he's aided by police officers, the CID, to, to break jail. Nothing has happened to the police. And then eventually when the bones were discovered in the manhole, the police go there unprepared. They borrow the pickaxe. They are borrowing a bamboo stick, put a nail on it to take their body parts. When they are done, they suck out everything in the manhole into a tank and they take it away. Somebody would say, they just messed up the evidence. Do you agree? I don't think they messed up the evidence. <clears throat> you know, the, the work of the pathologist to, to, to look into this. And I think uh, the police pathologist did very well. I mean, mm -hmm. he was able to identify which bone belonged to who okay. and so on. So that is not a problem. Not a problem. The okay. pathologist did his work. Mm -hmm. But I was expecting a lot of cooperation between the pathologist and then the field investigators. Okay. And uh, I think there was some problem. I think they, 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 they were not they were not seen to be doing the work okay. together. Because he is, he is the uh, forensic expert, right. the, the pathologist. And he looks into the bones. He right. tries to find out right. Right. when they died, mm. who, what happened to them. I mean, how did they mm. die and all mm. that. The field investigator must be seen to be taking notes from the pathologist. Okay. And then together, maybe they will come out with something. Right. But uh, I didn't see that kind of cohesion, that kind of but, but how is it, COP, finally, to you? How is it that the, if you will, some will say investigations are conclusive? Because once you have been able to, the bone of contention was to identify who those bones belonged to. Yeah. The bones have been identified to be that of the girls. The girls exactly. Forget about the fact that the families are asking to do a counter-investigation on it. But you have the suspect in case who has not denied that he didn't do what he's been accused of. You have concluded on the bones, and yet we can't secure conviction. How is that possible? Well, well that, that I mentioned murder case, murder. Mm. Uh, the, here, we have already secured conviction for his escape from right. custody. But who killed the girls? Is it too hard to find when you have found out who the bones belong to? It may not be too hard. Uh, the police need to work and get to the bottom of this. At least the girls have, we now know that they are dead and they were dumped in the, in the manhole and somebody is in custody. That person in custody is believed to have been behind the kidnapping. Mm. And therefore, he should be questioned, he should be interrogated until probably he breaks down and, and speaks the truth. If, if he's even, not responsible for the... the former director general of uh, CID says that we know where the girls are, they'll be united with their family, all of it, it doesn't give trust to the police in the eye of the, the public, former especially director these families. Yeah, the former director general said that uh, they knew where the girls were, 
And I think she said that because uh, of the information available to her, information okay. from probably the investigators and some other uh, uh, people who were working with, with her. But now that we have discovered the bones, and the bones belong to those girls, mm -hmm. I think there is finality. The girls are dead. The new IGP apologized immediately he came into right. office that uh, the, maybe the statement was unfortunate and uh, she was misled into making, those, uh, uh, making that statement. But the girls are dead. What is happening? How are the police investigating the murder? Mm. Who killed the girls? That's Everybody wants, yes, who right. killed the girls? Everybody wants to know. It's not just that we keep quiet and we don't talk because there was a whole lot of hula baloo about these kidnapped girls. Mm. And now that they have been found to have been killed, everybody, of course, wants to know how they died, who how killed did them. They, who killed them. Mm. Is it that boy who did it? Or he was held by some other people. And three, four girls killed. We would also want to know, perhaps, that uh, were they killed the same day, and I'm sure it is the pathologist who will be able to tell us whether, okay. whether they died around the same period. Mm. And I'm inclined to believe that at least some of them were killed around the same period. Okay. Because I, where I sit, I also ask a lot of questions. Right. I, right. I, I spoke to the pathologist some time ago, uh, what actually happened. And I was, I think I, when the bones were discovered, I went to him and asked, do you think these are the girls? Mm. And the answer was yes, even before the DNA test. Okay. And I said, how do you know? Looking at these bones, mm. what shows that these are girls? Okay. And then he... He tempted to explain. Right. He explained, explained, and I, I understood him. Okay. Long before the DNA report came, he wow. knew that, he knew that these this, girls this were dead. Yes. But I was thinking that uh, with those items discovered alongside the bones, some physical identification process should have initially been done. Right. And then the DNA test would have added finality. They, they, I'm sure the, the families would not have disagreed right. with, the, with, with right. the DNA if report. If that had been done. If that had been done. Yeah. But, but then the question of the police punishing their own. There's a suspect in custody who was aided, at least that was said in court, for which Udutuk Williams was, was jailed for three years for breaking uh, and was rearrested. Re we didn't hear about the, the police CID and his boss at the time at the station being punished. The least we heard was that they had been transferred. That does not instill public confidence. I am not getting you. Who has been transferred? The so the, the indication we are picking yeah. is that the police CID in charge of the case at the time, who Mr. Williams said in court had aided him to break jail, has not been punished as far as the public knows. If he has been, we do not know. And the public say that does not instill their confidence in the police. Because if I arrest somebody and give them to you to keep in safety, a, a, a criminal or a suspected criminal, and you help the person to break jail, I can't trust you, can I? Well, anybody who aids a criminal to escape, uh, I think would be punished by the police. We've had instances where police officers have, have been complicit in, in some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I remember there was uh, this, we called him Lone Ranger, Eric uh, mm -hmm. Alfred Zieme, who okay. is in jail for 50 years mm -hmm. for robberies. There was an officer, a sergeant, who had wanted to aid him escape. Right. And the officer was tried and then dismissed from the service. Yeah. I don't know about this very well. Okay. Because people keep on talking about he being aided to mm. escape and then the policeman has just been transferred and that kind of thing. If he indeed aided him to escape, mm. I don't think he, he, would, he would escape justice. I don't okay. believe that the policeman was. All right. Uh, Doc, take a bite on, on this topic, on solved murders, so many of them. The recent one being Ruth Eshen, the nurse who was killed in the Busumchi district. Uh, Yuom left behind three children and a husband, uh, Nenachere Benta. The killers of J.B. Dankwe Du are still standing trial. There's no conviction yet. Um, the Ghana Water Company, uh, Mr. Santi, GPHA, so many of them, list of unsolved murders. What do you say? Uh, how does that connect to the state of security where your former boss, David Asante Pito, has told us all to rest assured that we are safe? Do you feel safe? Um, on the whole, mm. I feel safe because I take precautions everywhere I go. Because you're a security expert? Well, uh, one has to take precautions whether you're a security expert or not. Those of us who are not, what do we do? 
Um, <laughs> but coming back to the topic, if, if I could quickly hit back. Right. I think vacuum, vacuuming the, uh, the manhole right. and taking everything together right. was not the proper way mm -hmm. of collecting evidence at a crime scene. COP says the evidence was all messed up. Uh, I don't think there could have been identification of any kind because the bodies, it was just bones. Right. So you cannot, uh, family members, and because of the way they, they collected the evidence, mm -hmm. if it was, they were wearing beads around their mm -hmm. waist and the bones were still intact, then the beads would have been on, mm -hmm. on the bone, on the skeleton. Mm -hmm. But the way they did it, you, you just couldn't. Right. So, so I think part of it is the lack of training. Right of how they should conduct themselves at a crime scene. So, so having said that... They went to the crime scene without pickaxe, shovel, and all of They borrowed them. Well, the, the police needs a little bit of, uh, a little bit of training. Um, somebody could be a CID officer, but wouldn't know how to conduct himself or herself mm. on the crime scene. So, so I don't blame them because the training wasn't there. My institution provides that kind of training. Okay. All right. The other thing is that the DNA mm -hmm. is not, it cannot be argued about. It's, it's conclusive. So that one, we should leave it alone. The family say they want to do their own DNA test. That is fine. To verify. That is fine. But I do not believe that the right to investigate crime is within the purview of government. Okay. Government has exhausted that right. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else has a right to that. We are sorry that the, the, the young women lost their lives, mm -hmm. but that is a responsibility of government mm -hmm. and they should leave it alone. Now, in terms of overall crime investigation in mm -hmm. this country, when a policeman gets killed, mm -hmm. the police puts everything together and goes after the potential perpetrator. Mm. When a civilian gets killed, it's always a dicey issue whether they will find the killer or not. Mm. There is a little bit of disconnect in terms of their devotion, the police's devotion towards investigating murder cases involving civilians compared to those involving their own kind. Mm. I know that esprit de corps within the forces, very, very strong. I've been there, I know what it means to lose one of your members. Mm. However, I think that they lack systemic crime scene investigation skills. Okay. And so when they go to a scene, they are not able to swoop mm. the whole place mm -hmm. and collect essential data. I do not know how much photography they use mm. because in photometry, you are able to actually trace back a scenario mm. case, you know, a, a scene scenario, re-enactment. Re to trace back how things happen. Okay. So I don't blame them again, because when you hire people to do a job, you have to give them the opportunity to build themselves up. You have to train them. We have a police college. We have all the schools. That is not for criminal training, criminal investigation training. There may be some aspect of CID training, but it's skeletal. So you have been in charge of this uh, department of the police before. He's raising a very serious yeah, concern he, about systemic crime investigation he, skills he, he lacking behind. Yeah, he mentioned the thing, the Takradi case, right. where things were not done properly. Mm -hmm. I think at, at, the, at the spare of the moment, I think some information go to the commander, and he just rushed there and did what he did. They should have waited for crime scene investigators to have come maybe mm -hmm. to help. We even said, bones or it was suspected that mm. these girls had been dumped in there. I think the information right. he had. And so they should have even called the pathologist, the forensic expert, also to be part mm. of the team to look into the well and then retrieve the, those things. But the way it was done, like he said, was not properly done. But I said the pathologist did a good job. He mm. was able to mm. separate them right. and then identify the, 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 the overall question will be, do we have the men, do we have we, the we tools? Have, we have crime scene. Do we have the tools, do we have the men? We have crime scene investigators. We have uh, crime scene, in some t we, we call the initial officers who attend to a scene, respondents. Okay. And if you are not a crime scene man, you should just maybe call, call, them call, off, yeah, yeah. call them off and then call in the crime scene 
people to come and do their work. But uh, like this one was different. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to maybe make them. He had discovered dead bodies, early the girls, and so mm -hmm. they rushed and did what they did. It was not properly done at all, right. like the doctor said. But they should have waited. They should have called in the crime scene people. And then knowing that these are bodies we are looking mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. definitely you need a pathologist. Okay. And, but that okay. was not So that. that's a fair point. Okay. Doc, wrap up for me. Let me bring you, Mr. Wood. All right. In terms of um, whether or not we are safe, I think the police needs to beef up its own criminal investigation division very, very well, give them the training that they, they need so that we can be a bit more reassured. The nurse that, the nurse that or the nurses that have been killed, I don't understand why up to now we haven't gotten any information. Two as suspects to have been arrested, we're told. Suspects, yes, right. Two suspects. But, but the suspects are just suspects, you know. So I... Even though the scene was burned mm -hmm. in, in the latest nurse case, right. I think this is where arson investigators mm -hmm. should have been called in. Okay. Not just a crime scene investigator, but an arson, arson investigator. investigator. Because uh, dealing with dead body and, 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 and burned dead bodies, mm -hmm. you can still even do a reconstruction based upon the penetration mm -hmm. of the weapon that was used to right. kill the person, whether it's asphyxiation, whatever it is. Mm -hmm you can, scientifically, you can prove right. the cause of death. Okay. So, I think with respect to the prosecution, mm. circumstantially, you can establish a case of murder against the guys that have been arrested mm. because they were in the chain of the victims that, to the last minute, mm. until they disappeared. Right. So, between the disappearance and the time they were with them, mm -hmm. um, I don't think we're going to have to struggle too hard to find out what happened to the girls mm -hmm. or who did it. Interesting. Uh, well, I, I was going to ask a, a question, but I, I'm pulling my plugs a bit. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll turn that to Mr. Bonner. Mr. Bonner, so the conversation on solved murders and all of that, in the wake of with the Shen and the nurses are asking that if you don't solve this, we will lay down our tools. That would not be too good for us. The RECSEC boss, who's the Ashanti Regional Minister, he made a statement that many have considered reckless and irresponsible. That if you go and kill your wife in your house, how does that become the responsibility of the RECSEC? And there's a man who is clothed with the powers to protect the people in this region. First of all, a civilian, and he's commanding formed units. And he makes such a statement on behalf of all of them. Is it time we need to detach the civilian community from people who are trained so that we can really, really feel safe? Is it time? Well, let me, uh, I will start with, especially the one in Kumasi. Okay. And I believe that we have to also educate, you know, viewers. Uh, what I've picked up mm. actually, uh, you know, indicates that mm. the lady who, the nurse who died, right. it looks like might have informed the husband. These are, this is information okay. I picked. Mm -hmm. uh, I think their house is under construction, okay. and I think uh, the fence wall or something. So she told the husband, when she goes to work and she's coming, she's mm -hmm. going to pick the money okay. and bring it so they pay the workers. This is what I mean. I have picked up from credible sources, mm -hmm. and so those who are watching us, uh, I think just like uh, you know, my other colleagues have said, let's be a bit you know, circumspect. Okay. Gen don't be careful where you are, the okay. people who are in your midst, especially mm -hmm. those who have to go carry money okay. because then once you say it and the masons are there and I'm not surprised I'm told the mason and the carpenter or somebody mm -hmm. have been picked. Mm -hmm. The masons and those people are there. If they are criminals, they would uh, ambush you. danger. You know, mm -hmm. they would. And so I think we need to be careful, you know, mm -hmm. with regards to all this. Now coming back to the issue would, you, the, would you blame that on our communal spirit as a people? I think it's the way... We are brothers keeper. We are ourselves. We, I so think we it, share has to, it, it has to do culturally, the mm -hmm. way we are brought up. Mm -hmm. We are brought up not to fear okay. that your next door neighbor could harm you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were born in the U.S., you were, I mean, you grew up in the U.S. or you live there, I mean you will not see naturally or, you know, ordinarily, where an adult like me mm -hmm. engaging a child. I mean, anybody who sees it, right. I mean, I could be arrested for right. attempting to kidnap the child. Mm. But over here, 
we all accost little girls and ask them, oh, I'm going here. And they say, oh, go there, go there, go there. And so we, we were not brought up being taught that, hey, mm. be careful, be vigilant, know who is around you. And so for me, it's just the communal spirit that okay. the way we were brought up right. actually informs the way we have lived. Okay. And therefore, sometimes when you hear some of the crimes, you mm -hmm. ask yourself, is it because you understand security or is it because these people just didn't bother or didn't care? Yeah, so coming right. back to the issue of the regional minister, mm -hmm. I think it is not necessarily just detaching the civilian leadership from the formed, you know, mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. or the formed leadership. It has to do with, you know, being a leader. Okay. It, it's just a leader. Mm -hmm. As a regional minister, he's simply just a policy maker. Okay. He's simply just a policy maker who would have to, they come to him saying that, you know what, we seem to have a problem there, we have a problem there, and it's okay, what do we do? Then the form unit would have to advise him. And so for me, on various platforms, I have spoken about it openly that that was very reckless. Mm. And in a very, excuse me to say, in a very serious country, he would have lost his job. Okay. Because as a regional minister, mm. or as the regional, uh, he is in charge of the regional security, security council. council yeah. It's just not the human beings that come under you. Even if the fishes in, what do you call it, uh, Lake Bosom mm, yeah. are poisoned, right. that comes under your purview. Mm -hmm. Even if the birds that are flying in, 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 in the sky drop to the, to the ground, mm -hmm. you need to investigate whether somebody has polluted the environment. And so to say that, you know what, uh, the, those, I'm not, I cannot be responsible if somebody kills a wife. Mm. And he went on to defend it. For me, that was the lowest in terms of, uh, and probably ridiculing, you know, his own, uh, you know, position and that of the president who appointed him. Mm. And so for me, I've spoken about it and I'm saying, you see, uh, it has to do with some amount of arrogance okay. on the, uh, you know, on the part of our leaders, some of them, not mm. all of them, mm. who, because of power, mm. they sometimes don't know that this power, they derive it from the people. Mm. And so if you look at this unsolved murders, now going into the unsolved murders, you see, the, it, is, it is an open secret that the police in, is malnourished. Really? They, they, oh, of course. I mean, how many homicide units that the police have in Ghana? I mean, he is a former CID boss, so he can tell us. How many homicide units do they have? And a homicide unit is a specialist unit. Right. A homi when you see the police homicide van, if they have, their homicide van is well equipped, they should have everything in there. And just like uh, they've said, you go in there, do they sometimes, when unfortunately JB Dankwa Edu mm -hmm. was killed, that morning I was one of the people who was called, I went there. And you'll be surprised, the police, you went there, some of them went with phones to take pictures. Jesus Christ. And in that, that morning when we got there, it was like a fanfare. Party faithfuls who were mm -hmm. all over the place. You are talking about a very important person who we suspect has been murdered. And the place, the, that place, maybe usually 100 meters, are, you know, oh, around it, would have to be cordoned off. And they were in the vicinity, messing up mm. the, what do you call it, evidence. Mm. And so I am not surprised that issue is still dragging, because you see, we seem to like the dead more than the living. Mm. And so when people die, we go celebrate, celebrate. And so you ask a question, why do we have unsolved murders? Because you see, the police is ill-equipped. How many, like I said, how many homicide units do they have? Mm. How many of them are properly trained mm. to manage crime scenes? How many of them are trained to manage crime scenes? A police officer like this one that got banged. Mm. I mean, simple crime scene, I mean, basic crime scene management. If, if you have a certificate, maybe basic certificate from, is this, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Norman's school. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the first thing they will teach you if uh, you go into that school would be to manage crime scene, secure it. All right. And you will be told that you would have to secure it until such a time that you have collected all the evidence and still put in, you know, right. your, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the things for, you know, right. uh, Fencing the place up. Right. But unfortunately, they collected whatever, maybe just picked up the disease body, and then they. But, but the police now is attracting a lot of, if you will, educated people. A lot people of People who have higher, higher degrees, mm. are, are 
now getting into the commission uh, service. A lot of so uh, so now I disagree with you. How, how I dis is it I, that? I disagree Why with you. Why do you disagree? Somebody with who that? goes to do psychology at the university, okay. you are not going to be taught crime scene management. Okay. Somebody who goes to do political science mm -hmm. PhD, you are not going to be taught crime scene Whose management. Whose job is it to teach them? Whose job it is has to do with their own structure. The police, he knows, they don't have a philosophy. Today, 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 Ghana police has no philosophy. And so this IGP comes and says, uh, transformation, mm. uh, transformation. Another one comes and leaves it. An IGP comes and says, police visibility. Another one comes and but if they have a philosophy that all of them have agreed right. to follow. A blueprint. Mm. You know, you have a proper succession planning, but we don't have it. And so as we speak, you have uh, an infiltration of people who are not even supposed to be there. Mm. And so you have the wrong people, I mean, officers going to undertake courses that don't relate to their jobs. To what they do. And so you see, the uh, unsolved murders has to do with the fact that we have a lot of officers who, to me, have retired, who mm. are working on cases. Mm. In other places, those officers are sometimes brought back. Mm. In other places, because then you are working on this case docket. They will bring you back as a code file. They give it to you, maybe four or five murders, and you are paid. Solve them if it's going to take even 10 years. And usually, I mean, I'm sure they know. Mm -hmm. Usually, even if it is 10 years mm -hmm. and they're able to crack one, mm -hmm. they would have arrested a serial killer. Okay. But over here, when it is time for you to retire and you retire, I've been now. You go home. They are done with you. We, we, seem, we seem, COP, let me come to you. We seem to have uh, a wild appetite for retired people being retained your rule says that if somebody has to be retained they are being retained because they have a special skill that we cannot lose but if you look at our igps over a stretch even the present igp david asantia Pietu, all about five or six of them in that line four of them yes and even now there are some cops who have also i'm told put in a bid to to be retained Plenty. Plenty of them. The so what, where from this appetite for retired people to stay in no. there? <laughs> when, when the UN says one policeman to 500 people, what we have is one to about 900. And we are keeping old people in there. Is there a special skill they will that we can't find that, anywhere that else? Is a, that is the point you have raised. Special mm. skill. If you have a special skill and you are retiring, it is better to retain you right. because of the skill yeah. you possess. Right. Unfortunately, this is not the case here. Uh, there are commissioners of police. Some of them have been retained, given mm. one year, two years. And I'm wondering who is there giving them the, 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 the what do you call it? The, the retention, extension. right. I don't, I don't who get it. Who is signing it. the letters? Yes, I don't get it. Because some of them have no skill at all, but they, they are there. <laughs> but the skill, those with skill, are allowed to go. I didn't mm. say this. Yes, uh, so, we so, didn't say so, that. So. And they, some of them are complaining. Of yeah. course, if you have scale, if you are a doctor at a police hospital, and then you, you are retiring, mm -hmm. and we still think that we need you, and you are retired, I don't think there is any question about that. Okay. If you are a skillful investigator, a homicide mm -hmm. specialist, whatever, and then you are retiring, and you are retained better. Right. But others have been retained and you don't understand why some people are asked to proceed or leave and others remain you giving extension understand. others remain and are giving extension and I, I sit down there and i say ah so who is how how do they know this man that they retain him why have they allowed this man to go I, 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 we had an asb a very experienced officer all-round officer and he was asked to go he is time him mm. and then he went and nobody even thought that if we retain this man he will do us a whole lot of good he's uh, he's gone mm. and yet others are getting attention so, it's, so what's it's usually surprising. what's usually the plan for those who have a certain skill who are retained is there a training program to pass on the knowledge that they have mm. onto people is, is there something like that because mm. and i'm asking this because if you for example are a cop and you are retained when your retirement time is due, and you don't have a special skill that we immediately need, what you're doing is that you are blocking other people, exactly. DCOPs, ACPs, yeah. uh, chief superintendents, superintendents who are down there in the line who are counting on your retirement for their promotion. You are blocking everybody. That's it. And you are, you are killing morale. Yes. 
That's why I said, if you have a special skill in your routine, I don't think people will even question. Is there, is there a training program that happens? Well, so no. we are keeping you for two years, and in two years, your KPI includes that help us to solve this, but to also train. No, but but your presence there, when you have not retired, you should be able also to train those under you or those working. Does with it you. happen? Oh, so it happens. If you are there, people learn a lot from you. They learn. You don't wait until retirement and then you are given extension before you impart knowledge to the others i okay. don't think so thank you uh, doc take a final bite on this one <clears throat> the conversation about the numbers you earlier said that uh, mr bonan said they are malnourished a police service is malnourished you have also spoken in similar vein uh, you are asking for specific units and all of that our presence ratio one policeman to about 800 900 the un says one to 500 so already we have a shortfall where do we go from here? Some places even one to two thousand. Jesus. Christ. If we go to Kaswa, <laughs> Nyanya no area, there's <laughs> one to two thousand police uh, citizens. And so when you use the when you do the national average, you are that's one thing we forget. You go to your police headquarters today, there are several police officers who are not doing anything. If you and so you add all these numbers and you strike the national average, you get one to nine hundred. But if you are going to do proper zoning, you will realize that some places are as many as one to 2,500. Doc, do you still feel safe? You said earlier, this is the statistics <laughs> yes, available. Yes, I, I do feel safe. One to 2,000, one to 900. They are creating a division in Kasua. I'm sure to take care of what you just said. They, 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 we have only one division. But it used to be, but as but we now, speak, it hasn't been created. It has been created. <laughs> there's been a, there's a, a, a divisional commander who has just been brought in. So they are creating a division. Uh -huh. okay. Maybe to take care of the numbers. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I hope so. <laughs> but like you said, it's true. One to okay. two thousand. Yeah. To, uh, yes. I think, uh, okay. I think the experienced guys are not doing the field work that they should do. Mm -hmm. They are not passing on knowledge. Okay. In Ghana, people do not traditionally pass on knowledge. Right. They go for expensive sponsored training. Mm -hmm. They come back, they don't share. Not even the slides they got. That's cruel. Yeah, it's yeah. very cruel. We are not kind to ourselves. And there are too many people at the police headquarters. That place is expanding. Mm -hmm. Every year it's growing bigger and bigger. Instead of the people going to the field, they are sitting in air conditioning offices. Many of them are so overweight that they don't deserve to be in the police force. <laughs> they, they don't. Um, because you cannot be... That's why they shoot so easily. Because if the guy cannot run after a, a criminal, okay. uh, the, the, the next best thing is to shoot. Yeah. And, and they don't know how to de-escalate conflict. So that they need to really reorganize the whole structure. Mm. Within a homicide unit, unit, there should be a cold case unit. And all of these are missing. Okay. But we, generally speaking, the police is doing a good job. Mm. Their presence, I like to see, okay. to be brought back, mm. the visibility police. Yes. Yeah. It was a good thing. Mm. Thank you very much. You're My welcome. guest this morning, and I'm sure you're enjoying the conversation. Let it continue in your homes and offices uh, if you can. But thank you very much to COP, uh, Bright to do as a retired uh, Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department. Also, Dr. Ishmael Norman. He is the President, Institute for Security, Disaster and Emergency Research. And Mr. Adams Bonner is a security and safety expert, counterterrorism, defense and international relations. My name is Johnny Hughes. We will continue the conversation on uh, agreeing on the economy and many other sectors while we wait for the president to arrive in parliament to deliver the state of the nation address stay with us we'll be right back after this break